If you see a worm like this in your yard this spring, don't touch it with your bare hands. But also, don't worry. That's the advice we're hearing with gardening season knocking at the door. One or two uh, incidents being reported so far this year. John Reynolds is with the Oligoketology Laboratory in Kitchener. He's studying this species of worm, the wandering broadhead planarium or hammerhead worm, an invasive species that arrived in Ontario less than a decade ago, likely through the trade of plants and related material. Originally from Asia, it's now consistently spotted across North America, including here between Toronto and Windsor. Reynolds explaining the good news is they are carnivores, mostly feeding on other worms, as well as garden pests like slugs and snails. The issue, however, is the worm secretes a mucus that can contain a mild neurotoxin. Which will make your hands go tingly and whatnot. Uh, they, sir, they aren't lethal. They aren't, you aren't going to die from it, and they aren't going to get really sick or anything like that. Reynolds describing the mild toxin as a defense mechanism for the worm. Adding, if eaten by people or pets, it'll make you sick, but it's not deadly. It's sort of a milder form of the puffer fish, same, same family of toxin. So welcome to the, the garden. Meanwhile, Kathy Cavasilis is with the Ontario Master Gardeners Association. She says there are actually lots of things in the garden that can hurt you. Cut your hand on something, you can, I mean, many of the plants that we grow in our garden are extremely toxic and most people are unaware of that. She says the usual safety techniques in the garden will also work for these worms. Gloves. Gloves are big. You've brought some, and this is I more than good gloves. enough. Right? Yes, and I, I, you know, any kind of gloves will work. You just want to keep your hands covered. These have a little sort of rubberized plastic so things can't seep through them to your skin. And if you still manage to get some of that mucus on your skin? You go inside right away and you wash your hands, right? Don't touch your eyes, don't touch your mouth. Meanwhile, the Invasive Species Centre is reminding us long, cold Canadian winters like the one we just had are generally good for helping to control a number of invasive pests, depending, of course, on their tolerance to the cold. So definitely it could, it could cause uh, mass die-offs and, and uh, potentially wipe out some populations while others, um, um, they will kind of be set back a bit and they'll just reestablish. So it, it is dependent on the type of species. These particular worms do tend to prefer warmer, more humid conditions. To survive the prolonged freeze, they must burrow into the soil or seek sheltered areas. Right now, the worm is not currently tracked or regulated by the province or federal government. But if you find one, you're encouraged to destroy it. All three experts saying, don't cut it, it'll just multiply. Instead, advising to put it in a plastic bag and leave it in the sun. For City News, I'm David Zura.